this biblical insert i'm going to describe i'm going to introduce to you contains about 70 percent protein according to research that's been done over the years and is an alternative a proven alternative low-cost protein source for non-ruminant ruminant livestock and indeed other animals other kind of livestock animals that you keep on your farms as well as human beings so this is not like wishful thinking what you're about to see is based on what has been done over the last especially by one particular company from israel uh, i think about the last five or so years it's amazing but most importantly this insect you need to know like i said it's a biblical insect quite um, often mentioned in the bible but it's also an insect that is eating worldwide i just want to describe the features to you as captured by this company and then i'll go straight into the nature of matter i'm going to be giving you 11 different urls you'll be able to pursue you look in the description you'll be able to see them that enable you to actually follow up on in more detail on what i'll be highlighting in this video otherwise this video will be so long and you will never you'll not be able to end it so you are going to be listening to what i'll just take at the excerpts but you'll be able to check the description box for this video just look in the description box for the urls to actually go to each of them some of them are videos some of them are web page reports and stuff like that all right so let's get started the first thing I want to show to you is this mind map and I've built it based on what a particular farm business in Israel has been doing. I think the first time I saw anything on there was about 20. Well, the reports I saw, the first time one I saw in which the, the CEO um, was granting an audience to a journalist as part of a promotional strategy was in 2017. So let me just quickly run through it. Project Edge, the, the, so the product they're selling is based on this insect. And there are four key um, drivers they're using as the selling points okay the product edge the fact that it has so it has an edge over other products of similar um, nature in the market the fact that it offers efficient farming opportunities the fact that it's sustainable the fact that the fact that it's healthy and so this refers to the product so the first of so so let me introduce this insect to you i'm sure just looking at it on your screen now you you instantly recognize it but i'm sure the last thing that probably came to your mind well depending on what part of the world you live in is that it could be something you could consider eating giving it to your animals to eat would not be an issue i'm sure but not many people will consider that they have to, they could actually consume the grasshopper but if you recall in the bible the grasshopper is a close relative of the of the locust and you know you do know that locusts were something were insects that were mentioned several times in the bible it's been uh, things that are consumed anyway for your information in mexico they are called chapulines i'm not sure that's the correct pronunciation okay but it's supposed to be the spanish word for grasshopper and it's cooked in the variety of ways but um as i'm going to show you in this video um there are communities across the world that eat it and i'm just going to focus on two countries in africa alone uh, nigeria being one then a state called maiduguri you're going to see a video by i think channels television that show that it was, it's consumed as a delicacy and some people actually have used it to sustain themselves there's a woman who was interviewed that has actually sent her children up to university level of uh, to acquire up to an university level of education um consuming gra um, by selling grasshoppers which she cooks or fries uh, then you have um, places like uganda where it's popularly known as insenene armed with lamps and bags these young men in meduguri northern nigeria are hunting grasshoppers catching the jumpy insects takes patience and skill when they are in season between november and march the best time to catch them is either at night or at dawn when it's cool outside and the insects are slow to react the young men will sell their catch at the nearby market residents here are working to rebuild their lives after the military drove out jihadist group Boko Haram which waged a seven-year campaign to create an Islamic state in the Northeast Insects generally provide a cheaper option for protein compared to other traditional meats. Mary Moses is popular at the market for her crunchy fried grasshopper. The mother of seven has been in the business for over 10 years and it has enabled her to educate her children. In a good month, she makes about 15,000 naira. Abu Bakr is the driver who operates through most northern states from Kano, Katsina to Meduguri 
He buys grasshoppers here for friends whenever he's on a trip. Eating grasshoppers is something we learned from our parents, and we have gone on to eat them. When coming to the state, people usually send me to buy the grasshoppers for about $16 on the ball, and then on my way back, I deliver them. They like them so much. It's true that grasshopper meat is just like any other meat, only that it comes from the ground. You may not eat them, but your ancestors sure ate them. Globally, at least 2 billion people eat insects, and more than 1,900 species have been used for food, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization. Food and nutrition scientists at Makerere University have embarked on a project to add value to crickets and grasshoppers, which have been proved to be highly nutritious and beneficial to children as the protein is essential to their physical and mental development. They can also be added to animal feeds. Dr. Dorothy Nachimbugwe, together with other scientists at the university, are behind this project. Um, so insects are very high in protein. We compared the conventional sources of protein, which is chicken, fish, and beef, with insects, including crickets and grasshoppers. And we found that the percentage protein on dry matter basis of those insects is comparable to that of the conventional of, 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 of sources, fish, poultry, and, and beef. But also what we found is that the amino acid profile, eh, the building blocks in the protein that build our bodies, they are very well balanced. Vitamin A, which is good for good eyesight. Uh, vitamin E, which is an antioxidant. Uh, vitamin uh, D, which is good for building strong bones and teeth. Dr. Nashimbuko says chicken feeds that has an ingredient of crickets is more nutritious than dagafish or mukene. The layers on insect feed continued laying long after the layers on conventional feed stopped laying. And the eggs were very high quality. The yolk was yellow. The rearing of protein-rich edible insects, the crickets and grasshoppers, has started in Uganda and Kenya. We hope that soon we will be able to make tons. But right now we are just making grams of the insect that are rare. There are companies in Canada, in USA, in Europe that are actually commercially producing insects and incorporating them in food, in uh, snack bars, in, um, in chocolates. Uh, they are also incorporating them in, uh, in all sorts of food, in bread. Finland recently launched a bread that is containing crickets and they were counting them, 12 crickets per loaf. And, and it was selling. So I'm not telling you what you don't know. For the most part, if you are based in Africa, you must have at some point come come in contact with people that eat it. It's just that growing grasshoppers on a commercial scale might be what is new for most people. Anyway, now this what you're seeing on your screen uh, is a page on which I first discovered that there's a company, the first company in the world, first commercial producer of grasshoppers. All right. Um, so the company is called if okay let me just check all right um we'll get there i think it's hagal technologies if i'm correct but we'll soon get it. yeah hagal food tech sorry hagal food tech it's a, an israeli based company the first commercial grasshopper farm all right and um at this time in 2017 or so they had raised about a uh, million dollars for the startup the ceo incidentally is a well accomplished entrepreneur a multi-award winning serial entrepreneur so i think that may have helped because when you talk about something that's a bit unusual and not very popular kind of a uh, business idea it takes somebody with such a background who has access to the right kind of investors and who has the confidence of investors reposting him to kind of sell the idea. So I think that's probably what helped. Um, now, one of the things they did, as you can see, uh, that's, as he mentioned, that grasshoppers normally will uh, reproduce probably about, the gestation period takes about 40 weeks normally. So the eggs will hatch in 40 weeks. That's 52 weeks in a year. The year is gone already. But now they've been able to find a way to increase the number of life cycles, reproductive cycles, from one per year to 10. You can imagine what that means. That's multiple folds. Um, scaling up in terms of uh, reproductive capacity now they've also gone ahead and modeled the um, grasshopper farming after the poultry industry all right so they have some that use only for breeding so you have the breeding stock and you have the ones that are offspring that sold into the market um they, f they put them to sleep by you know lowering the temperatures until they become like 
you know uh drowsy and then they, they just pick them up but that's over here that's sorry, over, over there in israel all right i've seen grasshopper farms in other parts of the world where they just there are individuals in china for instance who grow grasshoppers on a large scale and just harvest them they use nets and all that you know so there are different methods to go about doing it but this company is actually using high tech high technology to do this all right vertical walls of hydroponically grown wheat and grass and things like that those are you can see the grasshoppers all over the place there one of the hatching areas uh, sorry rain areas all right now the thing i want to point out is that um there are some advantages the grasshopper has over other kinds of insects so one of the major rivals the grasshopper has and which has been more ac well accepted in the developed world is cricket crickets crickets are being used as feed ingredients to supplement nutrients in a lot of everyday food items even candy bars you know uh, cereals all kinds of food stuff that are store, sold in the conventional stores crickets are being used to um, augment the protein and other nutrient contents because they do have a, a very rich profile of nutrients uh, talk about amino acids talk about um what they call them Ooh, what's this um, i keep forgetting this yeah lower color cholesterol they have high content of omega-3 omega-6 you know um iron zinc folic acid chitin you know uh, but most significantly they have more than 70 percent dry protein content that's cry protein content by dry weight you know that's huge okay so um so compared to crickets however because that's this is why this is why Hagol tech um, food tech is pushing for adoption of um, grasshoppers as a superior alternative um crickets are not easily reared in um, swarms in intensive and kind of um, conditions compared to grasshoppers because they normally live as individual the crickets themselves so that makes it more difficult but the minute you try to live the, the um, rear them in large population they tend to die all right so but grasshoppers are just suited perfect for that as you know you have the swarms you, you know you have the when you have the locust um, invasion and all that because they move in swarms you know so they are actually already naturally ad naturally adapted to being to growing in such conditions where they are existing in large large numbers per unit area and that is what makes them an ideal alternative a superior alternative to cricket so this company is trying to sell them but of course you can imagine there are many things to be when many obstacles to be overcome but most importantly as i said there is a large volume of people across the world that consume grasshoppers amazingly which is why it's a bit odd that people still have an issue with it uh, about 2.5 billion people across the world asia africa and central america um consider it a very acceptable form of um you know consumption food form of food all right um as i said the nutritional profile is good uh they are grown more efficiently than crickets um uh, what else what else what else yeah so the main issue has been the some people call it the ache factor some people call it the yolk factor and uh, nigeria would probably call it the anyama factor why should we eat this kind of thing blah 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 well the truth of the matter is that there's so many things we eat in some parts of the world that other people would not like to eat in some other parts of the world um some people eat earthworms some people eat what's it called centipedes you know it all depends on what part of it. some people eat dogs i wouldn't eat dogs i would not raised to eat dogs but some people in nigeria here eat dogs and it doesn't kill them so the point is it's a matter of not making it appealing so the focus that hargold food tech has developed is to um, find ways to sell whole grasshoppers to the food service market food service market people that produce foods that people eat and then they can then meal and then they also sell milk grasshopper powder to food manufacturers in the u.s and you know so over here in, in africa we have a lot of markets open markets where insects are sold that's the truth so we see it all the time in a place like uganda mac rack and gra um, grasshoppers are sold literally every day in various form cooked and uncooked all right um so the the company has however over the years and i have um several pages here to show that they've been able to um kind of uh, partner with scientists and also uh, industry stakeholders to make grasshoppers more appealing all right so they produce uh, grasshopper protein based products and developed uh, and is developing its own consumer products by the way uh area of supplements or medical foods all right so the market is huge 
and uh, they're exploring it. But there's something he said that I think is important. The CEO of um, Hagor Food Tech, the draw Tamir, he said there are about 8,000 8, species of grasshoppers globally, but he said not all of them are edible. And um, okay, I, I think I said it the other time. About five years ago, it started. This is 2021, so 2017 thereabouts. And they were coll- they collected about 20 different species. They were pro- able to produce them in large numbers, so they were able to really uh, experiment and see which ones were going to give them the largest volume of um, um, eggs, you know. And then they shortened the incubation period of the eggs, and um, so, but they could only settle on one based on the regulations in their country, and they did. And that particular species met the requirements for superior superior nutritional content, neutral taste, which is very important to allow people to use it in different. F- um, forms for different purposes and flavor and uh, the existing demand in the, in the markets you know now if we go further you see that we have this i'm not going to play some of this i'll probably just sh- include them for you to see towards the, as i go along and maybe and maybe i'll insert them as clips you can listen to them and this is where uh, on a israeli daily tv i think this is yeah i think this is israel israel daily tv yeah all right, so here they featured and they actually put up a website called biblicalprotein.com very intuitive so the minute you hear that you're curious you know oh, what kind of biblical protein are we talking about so it's, it's certainly attention getting and again this is where i talk to farm business owners those of you who are farm CEOs this is the creativity i'm talking about before because you run a farm does not mean you should not have marketing flair you should not have marketing creativity and ingenuity you should not be able to pull marketing stuff because that name alone is an is a, is a marketing stunt of sort biblical protein is likely to prop people up in a very religious society like Nigeria. make people want to say oh what's that biblical protein what is that what does that mean you know so again um i think farmers need to wake up and realize that you are running a business therefore you don't just focus only on production a business has many aspects to it and the marketing should be as important to you as the production if you know you want to make sales like but Dubin said you are a marketer first and an expert second this is more and more reason why because you look at this man this Trotamir it's clear to to anybody who's watching that his flair for marketing is one of the strengths he has the creative thinking that the company has adopted forward looking um, uh, thinking has been helping them so they're breaking new new barriers all the time for instance take a look at this you can see here this lady this is uh, what's her name nicole kidman all right and they got her to eat on air on video grasshoppers their grasshopper meal okay so the grasshopper has a meal they prepared it and convinced her to be of course i'm sure there was some some money change hands she's a celebrity we all know her so but the point is that's what they did they reached out to somebody that they knew could be an influencer or is an influencer and they then connected with her based on on the desire to reach out to a larger audience of people okay who are potential consumers of their product so it's not for you to stay in your farm and expect everybody to just understand that you have a farm and you should come and buy why should they choose to buy from you as against buying from the other person that they're already familiar with you've got to reach out and you've got to go out on a limb you've got to be willing to to take the risk to step out of your comfort zone to make yourself more appealing to them you know um if you go further let me see if i can yeah so this is um, a report, Michigan State University, grasshopper and locust farmers is a sustainable source of protein for non ruminant livestock and humans in Kenya. It's a, it's a funded research project and uh, the project was being conducted. Again, you'll be able to check out the video um, in the links in the description. All right. Then this is the life of a grasshopper, a Chinese grasshopper farmer. Some of these you'll be seeing as I, as I keep, keep talking. I'm sure you'll be seeing them playing in the background. But this particular one, um, okay, shows the farmer is harvesting his um, rearing and harvesting his grasshoppers, and the children here are eating the grasshopper um, meal. Okay, um, which is this? Yeah, the industry in China, as you can imagine, everything in China is always, <laughs> you know, big, big, big. So the Chinese breeding farms, uh, sorry, yeah, for grasshoppers, is growing. Uh, just like they did with the one i showed on cockroach farming you know astronomically you know i mean 10 tons of grasshoppers for, for heaven's sake you can imagine all right then the the video um that i found most interesting was this video by macquarie university it was a bit sad to read that day and so that time they said they hadn't really begun to rear them in any significant quantities but they were able to get results from their research on the trials they did that show that the nutritional benefits 
to animals okay um, was great and was even more longer lasting uh, because the, the according to them the um, poultry the bird that they fed with the meal with the feed that contained the insect uh, nutrients insect based uh, nutrients did much better for a longer period of time than the one that did not all right and um, of course like i said earlier in in uh, uganda it's a grasshopper it's a big delicacy so people there are so many youtube channels i found that were talking about cooking up grasshopper you know so while some people think it's yucky some people actually relish it but the most important thing is we're saying that let the two meet that there's a meeting point the people who love eating it and people who rear it okay they, there's a connection there because the, the, it means the market is there so it's for you to identify where the market is and then you who are producing it can target that market by making it more available to people in that market you know, that, that means you have to go out of, get out of a farm and explore ways to collaborate with those who can reach out to those your target audiences better for you all right so but most importantly farm business owners need to understand you have to develop a marketing passion if you really want to make more sales and you have to be willing to think out of the box for instance those of you who are livestock farmers you want to, you complain about poor um, availability of feed stock and also prohibitive prices of some of the feed ingredients you use then we are telling you that there are insects you can farm and you are beginning to say oh i don't want to do that then you still want to get the feed stuff you're going to use at pocket friendly prices how do you do that because the person producing your feed stuff is having to deal with the same economic conditions you are complaining about so they cannot give you anything that you want to buy from them at a lower price than what they're already giving it to you because it will be unprofitable for them to do so so just as you need to make profit they need to make profits the alternative therefore is to, for you to explore ways to become self-dependent on in production of the ingredients you need to feed your livestock so that you can you can become more profitable and this is an example there's a farm business in israel that's doing it yes they are operating at a much higher level but the same kind of thinking and adapted can be adapted by you for your own farm and you will do you will do well all right if you have any questions and need help making use of the ideas i've shared there reach out to me i wish you well